Hello everyone, in this video I will analyze the parts of a drum pedal and how these parts affect playing. There are three main parts of a pedal which differ from one to another. These are the drive, the cam and the footboard. But the most important part of a pedal is the drive, so let's start with that one. What's a pedal drive? A pedal drive is the part of a pedal between the cam and the footboard. And the most important thing these parts affect is responsiveness of the pedal. So there are three types of pedal drives. Here we can see uh, chain drive pedals, uh, which are the most common among drummers. And there are two types of it, single chain and double chain. Let's start with single chain. These pedals are the oldest between these types. And they are mostly produced pedals because they don't require much material, don't require much time to make as the others. So this uh, makes these pedals uh, cheapest pedals on the market. They are not so professional pedals. They are usually for beginners and intermediate players. However, we can see several old school world class professional drummers from 80s, 70s still using these pedals. That's because They've played maybe dozens of years with this kind and get used to its responsiveness. Here we have a Tama HP 50 model drum pedal, which has a single chain drive. Uh, I've just met this pedal yesterday. The design is really strange. Tama seems to make uh, an old school pedal with a modern look. The most unique with this pedal is that the spring adjustment is not on the underside, it's just near the beater for the user to access easier for spring adjustment. Let's continue with the disadvantages of the single chain pedals. The biggest disadvantage is they have a side to side movement like this, which decreases the responsiveness. You can see uh, this movement on double chain drives. Even the oldest models of these single chain pedals in every brand, this side to side movement is much more. But this model is uh, one of the best drum pedals that you can buy with a $100 budget, in my opinion. And the second is advantage. Single chain drives sometimes can be broken because of excessive use. They are not durable as much as double chain drives. For double chain drives, we can say that they are more durable. Uh, more responsive and heavier than the single chain drives, but smoother. Think of that you are pulling a rope which is attached to a weight with one arm, then tie another rope to the same weight and uh, pull it with both arms this time. Okay, that's not the same thing. Uh, we are not going to hit one pedal with our both feet, but uh, that's the main idea of double chain drive and they don't have side-to-side -side movement, as we mentioned before. Thus, uh, we can have the F-force movement directly to the downwards uh, without any lurch. Also, double chain drives are the most prevalent pedal among the professional drivers now. And here we have a direct drive pedal. Direct drive pedal's feature is uh, they are made from a metal material linkage between the footboard and the house that holds the beater. So the most important point is the F-force is directly being transferred to the pedal without any change, especially when the beater returns back. Because there is no any flexing with these kinds. As you see, there is flexing with the chain drives but direct drives uh, don't have that flexing. So it makes the direct drives most responsive pedals. Advantage of these pedals is they are the most suitable pedals for speed, but disadvantages are they are most expensive pedals on the market. And yes, they are very fluid, but they are very stable. So this hardens to play groovy and control these pedals. Some drummers suppose that when they switch to direct drive pedals, they can instantly play uh, with extreme speeds because uh, they are too soft, 
easy to play, etc. It's not like that. First of all, these pedals are too responsive and have a soft, uh, very different feeling than the chain drives. So switching from um, chain drive to direct drive require some time to adjust, like a um, couple of months at least. Unfortunately, Tama doesn't produce direct or strap drives for now, uh, but I'm sure we'll see them soon. Tama has defined a direct drive pedal with the perfect balance and alignment of three critical elements, power, speed, and feel. The new system consists of Tama's optimized transmission design, dual linkage, and slidable cam. Optimized transmission design incorporates nuanced mechanical angles that deliver power, speed, and feel like no other pedal on the market. Dual linkage connects the pedal board to the cam at four points, which results in direct pull and extraordinary power. Tama's slidable cam adjusts the cam turning radius for a customized, personal feel. The Tama DynaSync also incorporates a uniquely designed footboard angle adjustment, powerful Dyna beater, and Tama's unique sync coil. And another thing is, some drummers may say that uh, they can't play fast on extreme speeds because they use chain drives instead of direct drives. So this is not an excuse. There are several drummers who can play 16 notes with 250 BPM on double bass fluently with chain drive pedals. So remember, if someone can do it, you can do it too. So let's pass to uh, belt or strap drives. The linkage is made of nylon or rubber strap instead of chain. Uh, the strap reduces the friction, so they have a uh, lighter feeling than the chain drives. But they are not quite powerful and heavy as uh, chain drives and not responsive, light and fluid-like direct drives. These pedals are uh, in the middle of both but they um, act much more like direct drives rather than uh, chain drive pedals because the drive mechanisms uh, loosen is uh, closer to direct drives. There is not much flexing like in uh, direct drives. Chain drives have too much flexings. This pedal doesn't. So single chain drives have the least responsiveness. Double chain drives are uh, more responsive than single chain drives. Belt or strap drives are more responsive than the double chain drives. And the direct drives are the most responsive ones. And now footboards. The footboard is the piece of the pedal that your foot rests on and the length and the weight of it affects speed and power. I couldn't give up uh, using these two pedals in my whole uh, professional drumming life. So uh, I'm much aware of the differences of these two. One is uh, Tama's Iron Cobra pedal and the other is Tama's Speed Cobra pedal. Once I played many many years with uh, Iron Cobras which have uh, short boards uh, and when I needed faster kick drums I switched uh, to speed copper pedals. So uh, long boards are definitely much better than short boards in terms of speed. And they are better choice for players who use heel toe technique and play double strokes on the pedal. They are also good for players who have uh, big feet. Long boards give you more opportunity to use momentum. When you hit the pedal from this point rather than at that point, a little bit back, uh, with the same amount of force, you will provide more powerful strokes. So you're gonna say that why drummers choose uh, to use short boards? Some drummers uh, are using that momentum trick in short boards too, which is pushing the pedal uh, from a bit back, which produce more powerful strokes. I did it for many years too. I accustomed myself to push from a bit back and until I can read iron writing uh, on the footboard and some drummers push the pedal from the edge of it, heel down or heel up. So if these drummers switch to longboards and try to push the pedal from 
the edge, uh, they all gonna fail because it will feel very light under their foot. So if you want to switch from short boards to long boards, try not to push the long boards pedal from the edge. And the weight, it affects especially power of the stroke. The heavier foot boards will give more powerful strokes, but um, playing fast will be harder this time than the pedals which have lighter footboard. You can uh, superficially have an idea of the weight of a pedal like this. But calculate that from the edge of the pedal, they may be weight the same as the whole footboard, but remember their momentum points are different. So calculating from the edge will give you the best result uh, with this little test. And now uh, it's time for camps. Cam is the transmission part of the pedal which connects the drive and the beater. And it's directly related with the acceleration of the pedal. And there are two types of cams. One is linear or round cam and the other is offset or oblong cam. Uh, round cams maintain the same radius when the beater is activated, uh, so the acceleration of the beater doesn't change much until it hits the head. So um, this gives you a stable feeling. So the acceleration is almost the same everywhere here now. With the pedals which have offset cams, uh, when the beater gets closer to the head, they accelerate because they don't maintain the same radius here. Uh, first from this point requires less force to push and then pushing force increases uh, to the end. But you are going to do it with your foot much stronger in a little time. So they will feel like a whipping action at the end of the stroke. Thus you will have more powerful strokes and faster rebounds. So it's like the molar technique, uh, doing the molar technique with your wrist. They can be more powerful than the pedals which have round cams. And just to mention, direct drive pedals have no cam. Uh, they are just, as you know, uh, directly connected with a metal linkage. So they act like linear cams. Uh, the acceleration is uh, nearly the same everywhere, so uh, they are stable too. So in conclusion, let's explain a drum pedal mechanism with the Newton's second law. The drive mostly affects responsiveness related to the force. The cam mostly affects responsiveness related to the acceleration. The footboard weight mostly affects power related to the mass. The footboard length mostly affects speed related to the X length. I have tried to give general info about drum pedal mechanisms and I hope this video helps you to choose the suitable pedal for you. I recommend all the drummers to try all of these pedals if they have possibilities and choose the suitable drum pedal themselves related to their technique and their music type. And remember that this mechanical industry is growing so we can meet with different types of pedals and surprises in the future. So the next video will be about pedal settings. See you soon, take care.